Hello everyone, my name is Nick and we are back for my Pepper's Houseplant Haul. So if you watched my last video, my come plant shopping with me at Pepper's Greenhouse, I took you guys with me to said place and we saw so many incredible plants. So many, in fact, I ended up leaving with quite a few. So my receipt here is actually quite hilarious, the way it just says plants, 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 plants. But I left with 12 different plants. So I did get a few different doubles for me to either make a full pot of something or try a few around my home. So I have 12 different plants to share with you guys today, and most of them are new to me. In fact, I saw so many new varieties, some that I had never even heard of when I went to this place, so it was very eye-opening and very exciting. Um, so we're gonna start off with the peperomias that I got today. So the first one I have to share with you guys is these are, are these peperomia pereschii folias. So I actually already grow this in my house, but I stumbled upon these and they looked really good and they were a really decent price so each of these were $3.95 so I decided that I was going to get two and I'm going to plant them together in one pot and make a nice full pot of Peperomia Pereschia Folia. So Peperomias grow in the winter time so I'm always keeping an eye out specifically this time of year for new Peperomias to try because this is when they're going to start to spring to life as our other plants are starting to go to sleep. So Peperomias are really drought tolerant I'm always being careful not to overwater my Peperomias. I would say watering most of your Peperomias more than once a week is probably too much so that's something I'm always keeping an eye out for but I absolutely love these Peperomia Pereschii folias because they remind me a lot of Peperomia tetragona which is another Peperomia that I really enjoy. Another Peperomia that I've heard of before but I've actually never seen this variety of this. This is Peperomia metallica if I'm not mistaken and I'm used to seeing Peperomia metallica with leaves more of the size of this one that's down here at the base of this plant. However, this one just stood out to me in the store. It was the only one there. If there were a few, I definitely would have gotten a few of them because this plant was only $2.50. So I'm just absolutely loving the way these leaves are shaped. So I would definitely love to hear from you in the comments about this plant. I'm not too familiar. I sell two types of Peperomia metallica at the store that I work. Um, and I'm used to selling the Columbiana form or the Columbium form, which is the more smaller leaf version like I'm used to seeing. And then there's an even smaller leafed form, which I believe they refer to as the narrow form or the narrow leaf form. So I'm used to seeing those two varieties, but I've never personally seen this variety. And it really just stood out to me because if we're being honest, the other two forms of Peperomia Metallica don't really do it for me, but this one is really doing it for me. One more Peperomia that I have heard of before, but I just never actually got my hands on is this Peperomia Fraseri. So Peperomia Fraseri looks very similar to Peperomia Meridiana, which is another Peperomia I have in my home. So I was never too inclined to actually seek out this plant by a mail order, but when I did stumble upon it at Peppers, I was very excited to give it a go. So while this does look very similar to Peperomia Meridiana, a Peperomia I actually have right behind me right here, there is a distinct difference between this plant and that plant, and this is that is that this plant is known as the flowering Peperomia. So although there are no flowers on this plant right now, I probably should have taken some footage of the flowers on some of the plants that were at Peppers, but this plant is grown for its flowers, which if you're familiar with Peperomia flowers, they're normally just this like rat tail like stick coming off of the plants. These are known for their like cone like almost like bottle brush shaped flowers that they get. So this is one of the only Peperomias that is grown for its flowers. So I'm very excited to give this one a go. This one right here was only $3.95 as well for a four inch pot and a very, very full one if I do say so myself. So I have two Peperomias that I've actually never heard of before, which is very exciting for someone like me. I collect Peperomias and I have over 50 varieties. So it's not very often that I walk into a garden center and I see a new Peperomia. And I was honestly feeling like a little pepped out a few weeks ago. It was like, wow, like I, just, I feel like I'm not gonna see any new ones anytime soon. My day at Peppers was definitely that day that I was waiting for because I stumbled upon these Peperumia Peruviana, I wanna say, I believe what, the, what they were called. So here's the flowers that I was talking about before. So it's Peperomia Peruviana, as you can kind of see on this tag. And these were $3.95. So the same price as the bigger ones, so these must have been a little bit more of a premium variety, but I'm not surprised as I have never heard of this myself. So I can't decide how I'm gonna grow both of these yet. I think I'm gonna try one of them in a pot and I'm gonna try one of them in a terrarium is what I'm thinking, but when I saw these, I couldn't help myself but get two of them because I've just never seen them before. And then one more Peperomia that I've actually never heard of before, and I did a little bit of research on it, or I at least tried to do research on it, and I couldn't very much find anything about this one on the internet, so I would definitely love to hear from you guys about this, but Peppers is a very reputable place, so I would assume that they know what they're talking about. So this is a Peperomia pneumolaria folia oakhurst. 
or at least just Peperomia numillaria folia. Um, and this is a very fine Peperomia, as you can see, but of course, you know, I'm gonna hit you with that red on the back that I absolutely adore. One of my most favorite qualities in plants is when they have colors on the back of the leaves. So this one just really stood out to me. I was so excited to find a full four inch pot of this for $4.95. Uh, I was thrilled. I've, like I said, never heard of this one before. So I think I'm also going to try this one in a terrarium. I think this plant looks like it's just begging to be in a terrarium. So I think I'm gonna try that out. I'll probably pot it up a little bit later today or tomorrow. There are a bunch of little flowers on this one compared to the Peperomia Peruviana, which had much larger flowers. So you can see on this guy that there are much much smaller flowers compared to the other one. So that's a very interesting little trait about this guy. All right, that's all the peperomias I got from peppers, so now I have a few Hoyas to share with you guys. So if you watched my last plant haul video, or at least my Hoya tour, then I was talking about how much I love Hoya puba calyx. I totally have a soft spot for it. It's a very interesting Hoya because if I'm not mistaken, there is no true species of Hoya puba calyx. So there's a myriad of cultivars or varieties out there. So that's just something I find very interesting. And when I was at Peppers, I found this really lovely Hoya. They call it silver pink, but I've, I've often heard it as pink silver, but I'm not sure if silver pink is a different cultivar that they are growing. But of course, I fell in love with it for not only the lime green color of the leaves, but the pink splashes. So when I saw this, I was thinking to myself, am I actually going to bring home this six Hoya Puba Calyx? Like, I'm running so low on space. And I thought about it for a while. Believe me, we were at Peppers for multiple hours. It was a drive out there, so we spent a good amount of time there. And after, at the end of the trip, I decided, yes, I, I was totally bringing home this Hoya with me. So this is my six Hoya Puba Calyx, um, no shame at all. This one has a really nice new tendril coming in, which is why I picked it out, but it also has some nice old growth here as well. And I did get one more Hoya. I've actually never heard of this one before. So this was the plant that I definitely splurged on, if you will. Oh, if I, if I didn't mention the Hoya um, Silver Pink was $7.95. So that was probably the most costly, oh, one of the most costly. I think there's one more that cost a little bit more of the four inch pots that I purchased. But I got this six inch pot of a Hoya Pasilla. So I've never heard of this one before, but if I'm reading the tag here, it says a mounding trailing variety with glossy, thick, leathery, waxy, teardrop shaped leaves. Pleasingly scented light pink flowers having yellow centers, likes filtered light, warmth, humidity. So I really love the look of these leaves. I'm all about the foliage and I looked up the flowers and I love the look of the flowers. They're like cottony, like pinkish yellow. It's just gorgeous. And hopefully I'll see flowers on this someday. This is actually a very mature plant. Believe it or not, this is actually only one plant in the pot. So it's one plant that has, I believe, three tendrils that are going all around the pot. So for $25, I consider this a very good deal. So I was really excited to find out that they had this. And if I do say, the reason that these plants are so cheap are likely because they're growing them themselves. So they're constantly cultivating these plants and have mother plants that they are growing these plants off of. If I'm not mistaken, maybe not for all of these, for but for a large percentage. So that's why these plants are a little bit more affordable. So I was really psyched to find this Hoya Pasilla. I'm so excited to watch it grow. I just absolutely love the kind of just like muted leathery, uh, look to the, the leaves and then also they have a little bit of a venation stem so I really enjoy that. All right next I'm going to talk about the jungle cactus that I acquired. I think I've mentioned in some of my prior videos that I have been really gaining a soft spot for epiphytic cacti or jungle cacti. So that includes things like ripsalis, epiphyllums, even Christmas cactus. But unfortunately, jungle cacti usually have a large sticker price. So that is something that's kind of hard to swallow sometimes. Um, so I was really excited when I was at Peppers to find some of these for a really decent deal. So one of the first ones that I got was this Pseudo Ripsalis Ramulosa. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so this is the mistletoe cactus that turns red. You can almost see on the ends here that there's just a little bit of red. Um, these were kind of in a little bit of a shaded area at the greenhouse, so that's why they are mostly green, but I'm going to put this in a south facing window where likely within a few months it should have a nice red hue to the leaves. It's actually quite interesting. I should have taken footage of the larger ones that they had there that were very red and they're just a joy to look at. So I'm really interested in watching this one grow. I really love how relaxed it is. You can kind of see the way it's just kind of like draping over the nursery pot. Uh, this one was $4.95, which is a really good deal. And I'm really excited to watch this one change color. I think that's the thing I'm most interested in seeing over it even flowering. And I also have a rather interesting Ripsalis right here. So this is Ripsalis. Pentaptera. 
I might be mispronouncing that. Um, and I looked into it and pentaptera means five winged. So it has five wings uh, or five like edges to the leaves. So if we kind of look here, it kind of looks like a star, which is very interesting. So this one right here was also $4.95. And I thought that was a really good deal because as I said, Rip Salas typically have a large sticker price, at least some of the more interesting ones. So I'm thrilled about this one having three growth tips, even though it's just one piece in the pot. So I figured this one would be very much worthwhile. Rip Salas do prefer bright light, but they don't necessarily need as much light that you would give like a succulent or cactus. The only reason I'm going to give the Pseudo Rip Salas very, very bright light of a south facing window is because I would like to see it change to that bright red color that it gets. So this one, I'm probably gonna do a little bit more pulled back. I might actually grow it in my bedroom shelf where it's very humid, but it's very close by to a south facing window. So it'll still be receiving a good amount of light, but just not as much light as I would give a true cactus. And I do have one more jungle cactus to share with you guys today. I think this one is actually the one that might be the icing on the cake. So this is a fern leaf cactus, and this is one that I have oogled over at Urban Jungle. This beautiful four inch pot at Peppers was only $8.95. That is a steal. I cannot believe how inexpensive that was because I believe after marking them down so much below my markup at Urban Jungle, I think they were still selling for like 80 plus dollars. So you can imagine how much this costs and I would not be surprised if you find one of these plants and they cost 100 plus because that is what I would expect to normally see based on the wholesale price of these plants because they are not cheap. But as I said, Peppers is likely propagating most of these plants themselves. so. Fortunately enough for me, this plant was very much more affordable than normal. Although this is only one cutting in the pot, I do see one, two different points of new growth. And we also have the tip down here, although it looks like I might have accidentally kind of bent it a little bit in transit. But I'm just gonna leave it be because I really like the way it looks even when it's hanging down, you don't really notice. It's not upright, so it's not flopping down. So I'm just gonna leave that be. But I'm absolutely thrilled. This is one of the ones where I was like, there is no way in hell I am leaving without this plant. So of course it came home with me. All right, so that's it for the jungle cacti. So I think last but not least, I only have two more odds and ends to share with you guys. If you are no stranger to my channel, then you know that I absolutely love Senezio macroglossus. And I was very excited to say that they had the reverse variegation to the one that I've been already growing in my home for quite some time now. So this one obviously had to come home with me. I was kind of like thinking, I was like, this looks different but I have this already and then I realized it was the variegation that was opposite which I just think is very interesting so I'm thrilled to have not only the outside variegation Sinitsu macrogloss but then the inside variegation Sinitsu macrogloss in my home and I've noticed that this one is definitely more of a yellow cream variegation compared to my more white variegation on the one that I have already growing in my kitchen. I've also noticed that this one has a really nice pink stem to it so I maybe got to do a little bit more comparison but I don't remember my other one over there ever having as notably as a pink stem but I've also not been growing mine in a greenhouse unlike this one which has been for probably at least a year now. So if you are no stranger to my channel once again then you you'll know that along with Senezio macroglossus, one of my favorite plants, or one of the favorite genus of plants that I really like to collect is Cissus. And I have this Cissus rotundifolia right here, which I actually already have one already in my home. I've been growing a small piece of it for about a year now, actually, because it was a gift from my coworker Sue for my last birthday. So I've been growing this one for a year, or a different one of these in my home for a year now, and I've had some nice luck with it. And when I found these at the store, believe it or not, for $3.95, I was like, there ain't no way I'm leaving without this. This is crazy how large it is. Obviously, this was like the biggest one there and I had to pick it out and I was like not thinking straight because I'm already like struggling to find spaces for like all of these plants in my home, believe me, but I'll make it work. Anyways, this is such a find. I am loving how much new growth there is. You can see this one tendril specifically like sticking up like crazy right here and the little bit of reddish color that the new growth gets. So that's one of the things I love about cystus is that they kind of get ahead of themselves when they grow, similar to a Hoya, but they stick out these long tendrils that kind of crawl around and will grasp onto anything that they find. So I just think it's such a phenomenal plant to grow in the home. So that is it for all of the plants that I have today. As I mentioned in my last video, Peppers does do mail orders, so they might not have specifically every plant that I share with you guys today because I know they're pretty specific on the plants that they have in store versus the ones that they have on their website, but it's definitely worth checking out. I'll leave a link in my description for you guys to peruse. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.